Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Scarbo here speaking to you from the Siege of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Um, we're going to do In the News, and it's In the News today with Joe Biden. Um, we just had a speech from Joe Biden, um, probably the most important speech of his presidency um, that he gave in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And so um, I think Joe is definitely the person in the news to look at. Plus, we have an accurate birth time for Joe, so that always makes it uh, a little bit, I don't know, more pleasant for me. <laughs> Knowing the actual astrological chart gives me a sense of security that when we're working with people we don't have an accurate birth time with, it's a little bit more supposition in, in some ways. But uh, let's take a look at Joe. And I think we'll start with his astrological chart first. And um, give me a moment here. This is Joe's chart, but this is Joe with the speech. Okay, so here we have Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a um, Sagittarius rising. That means the ruler of his chart is Jupiter. He has Jupiter up there in Cancer retrograde. Um, and his, that Jupiter is trying his Venus, trying his Sun, trying his Mercury, and widely trying um, his Mars, but mostly Mercury, Venus, and the Sun. Um, Jupiter retrograde makes you open to other points of view, especially other sort of spiritual perspectives. Um, so it makes you more open-minded when it comes to comes to that. Um, the Sagittarius rising makes him pretty jolly. It makes him a happy, happy-go-lucky guy, or seemingly a happy-go-lucky guy, because actually he's very deep. A, a guy with uh, Venus and Sun and Mercury and Mars, all in Scorpio, all hidden away in that twelfth house, and so. There may have been times even in Joe's life where he wasn't sure who he was. And that will often happen um, when you're dealing with all of this energy in the 12th house, a very difficult house for you to sort of get your bearings in your life. And uh, when we go to his, um, his uh, numerology, we'll see that his youth square uh, is a one vibration. And your youth square is generally um, that which you sort of come in. It's connected to your um, to your shadow vibration. So it's what you're coming in to heal. And um, we'll talk about that when, when we get to it. Um, but I really, what, one of the reasons why I wanted to, Joe, is because um, I think he's very underappreciated by a lot of people, and I think a lot of people get him totally wrong. Um, he is the man of the time, and I'll say this right up front: I, I did not vote for Joe Biden in the in the primaries. Uh, I was a Bernie Sanders, and still am a Bernie Sanders uh, supporter. So um, he doesn't go as far as I'd like to see him go in the progressive direction, but he's not just my president. <laughs> he's everybody's president. And to a certain extent, um, he is going to be a reflection of where everybody is at, right? So um, we have all these planets in Scorpio in the 12th house. People with a lot of planets in the 12th house, uh, in the 11th house, in the 10th house, will oftentimes uh, have uh, issues um, or be in the type of professions where uh, it's more about public service. And honestly, can you do more public service than, than uh, being president of a country, especially a country as powerful as the United States at this time in, 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 in history? I mean, at, at a certain point, had you been like the Emperor of Rome, you would have been the most powerful. So, so there are times, and it's and it's interesting um, that, you know, for all intents and purposes, he is sort of the most powerful person on the planet, in in a way. But he's very uh, sort of understated and and uh, not, um, I don't know. Well, he's the antithesis of Trump, quite frankly. Um, so. 
people with a lot of Scorpio in their chart will often have a very intimate relationship with death. And we know that Joe had lost his first wife and his daughter to a car accident right after he, uh, I think, got into the Senate, was it, or the House? Um, and he lost his son, Bo. Um, and he's had a lot of loss in his life. And he's been president when, um, you know, we were still going through COVID. Um, so, so he understands what it means to lose somebody that he loves. I find that people with a lot of 12th house positions will often, you know, have that experience, but they also have an ability to connect with the other side. That 12th house is the veil. And so, um, and they tend to have a lot of people on the other side of the veil. And it's almost as if there's a line of communication that comes through that energy. Now, uh, Barack Obama had um, two planets in the 12th house. I think George W. Bush maybe had three planets in the 12th house. But Donald Trump has his Mars in the 12th, or two planets in the 12th house, Pluto and Mars. So um, both in Leo. So um, you will see it in the in the charts of uh, you know people who are pre who have been president. Okay, so um, Joe has a South Node in Pisces. The South Node is um, deals with your past. It deals with your childhood. It deals with your um, your the emotions of the past. He has his south node right at the end of Pisces, 008 minutes of Pisces, meaning that the nodes had moved all the way through Pisces and were about to move into Aquarius when Joe was born. Um, or the south node was about to move into Aquarius. The north node would have been moving into um, Leo. Um, Pisces is, is a sign of faith. And so he has probably had his faith tested many times. Um, yet his North Node is in the roll up your sleeve sign of Virgo. And so this is not somebody who can expect that just thinking that things are gonna be better and hoping that things are gonna be better, that things are gonna be better. This is somebody who has to get in there, roll up their sleeves and face their fears. He has Chiron in Leo um, conjunct his North Node. That is facing your fears. Chiron in Leo can be a broken heart, but it can also be a wound to the ego. And that North Node in Virgo is asking him to ignore the wound to the ego and be of service. Don't really care what other people are saying about you or think about you or whatever. Just put your head down, roll up your sleeves and get the work done. That's really what that North Node is, uh, is, is telling him. And it's in the ninth house of his philosophy of life. So he has this philosophy that if he just sort of works hard enough um, and ignores all the dramatics that perhaps um, he will succeed. And he has, uh, you know, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I think this was the third time he ran for president and this third, to, third time's a charm, right? Um, we also have, um, let's see, what else do I wanna say here? He has his Pluto in, in Leo, like everybody born uh, in, the, in uh, for the most part, right? In the 40s, yep, Pluto and Leo was in the 40s. Um, and so uh, it's retrograde. Um, he has Pluto retrograde, he has Jupiter retrograde. Let's see, what else does he have? He has Saturn retrograde, he has Uranus retrograde, he has quite a few things retrograde. When you have retrograde planets, you tend to be a little bit more willing to like go outside of the box. So while Joe may be considered middle of the road, he's not averse to um, trying something new or doing something new uh, to, to see if that works, right? Okay, let's take a look at Joe's numbers. Now, what I do with 
um, with these charts um, is that I take the person's name and date of birth and uh, I'm just gonna, I know you can't see anything. There we go. There we go, Joseph. Joseph Robinette. Um, so this is a way to get an, sort of an energy read on somebody. This is very good if um, we're dealing with somebody we don't have an accurate birth time to, or uh, maybe you don't know your birth time at all, you know, so you just know the day. Uh, some people don't even know that. It's very interesting. Uh, you do come up against that every now and again. But with this, uh, we can get a, an idea of the, his vibes, and we can see if the vibes from his numbers actually line up with what we see in the chart. What I've come to understand is the more connections we see between the chart, the numbers in the chart, the astrological chart, um, the challenges that these numbers and the things that fall in the tree of life, um, when things line up, they line up and it's pretty profound. And um, Joe has one of those charts and I'll tell you why. First of all, the first thing we do is we take out his, we take his full name, Joseph Robinette Biden, separate out the vowels, we add them together, we get a soul vibration. That's right here, soul vibration. Uh, he actually has uh, Joseph, the name Joseph, has an 11 in its vowels. So anybody with the name of Joseph also has an 11 soul. So right away, you name them Joseph, they already have the higher vibration of 11, which isn't necessarily easy. <laughs> you might go, oh, I'm going to name everybody Joseph. But it's a, it's a challenging vibration to uh, to work with because you have to keep your poise and you have to keep balance um, when most people wouldn't be able to. A master number means that you have to master something. And with a master number 11, you often have to master your feelings and your emotions too. All right, so we have an 11 here and we also have a 50 over five. Interesting when you see a zero next to a number, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That's considered the God force and sometimes works like a master number would. Um, so these are very high vibrational numbers. Um, this is a Pisces vibration and this is a Libra vibration. And that'll come in, that'll be important when we look at his chart. Now, if we add up his consonants, his consonants is his outer personality. This is the masculine side of him, the like, the Joe that you meet. The, the Joe that everybody knows deep in, 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 in his soul um, is this. And this is who we meet on the outside. Now, the 40, the 48 is also a Pisces vibration. So it has that sort of Piscean, maybe slippery, you know, that like, you know, you can't pin down a fish kind of thing. Um, uh, but but pleasant enough, three people like threes. Uh, threes tend to be um, uh, friendly and easy to talk to and interesting and intelligent. Um, the 48 over three is Pisces vibration, as I said. It's actually my outer personality vibration. So there's a, there's a, a, a a, a resonance between the way that I like interact with you and the way Joe Biden interacts with people, right? So, so it's that energy of, hey, they're kind of funny. But I know I'm, I'm telling you I'm funny. I am funny though. I uh, just might not be funny today. We'll see if I can be funny, good enough, well enough. Um, it is, it's a, it's a uh, vibration associated with mercury. And it's important uh, to have uh, education with this vibration. The more education you have, the better off you are. And I know school wasn't, I, I did do some reading up on Joe. School wasn't easy for Joe. He wasn't the brightest bulb um, in the, in the, in the, in the, on the tree, so to speak. But um, I think he had to use other, other things. And he also had, I think he might've had some learning disability. Um, and that's because his shadow, which is over here, is the same vibration. And this is associated with Mercury. So this could be his stuttering. This could be, uh, he could have had some learning issues or, or even processing issues, you know. Um, having Mercury's in, in a 12th house can also kind of do that to you because there's just so much information coming in at all the time that sometimes it's hard to discern what's really coming at you with um, that Mercury in the 12th house. 
So his inner self is a five. He's freedom loving. So he, and and five is the uh, the is the base vibration <coughs> for the U.S. Freedom, right? So uh, so there's that. His outer personality three, jovial, jolly, fun to talk to. Maybe seems a little bit um, uh, what's the word? Um, Scattered, diffuse, that kind of, you know, spacey, a little, maybe a little spacey. You can have a little spacey energy with this vibration. It's the, it's the fact that it's Pisces. I mean, how could you not be spacey? If you add these two vibrations together, we get a third vibration called his expression. His expression vibration is um, how he balances his inner and outer self. Now, his inner and outer self are both uh, Pisces. So how does he deal with that Pisces energy then? Well, Pisces is very absorbent and takes in a lot um, and doesn't always have the healthiest of boundaries. Um, and so sometimes you, you, there's a lot of, uh, you, you feel everything, you feel everything very deeply. And um, the, the, the expression helps him to, to deal with that depth of sensitivity, I think that he has. And that 17.8 is actually the star. Okay, it's this card right here, and it's associated with Aquarius. <coughs> so all those Aquarian ideals, uh, including democracy, which is very much an Aquarian ideal, um, you know, the age of enlightenment kind of ideal, uh, the enlightened man, as it were. Um, so, so, so that helps him to put into context, I think, all the information and, and all, most of that information coming in through his emotional body, uh, how, that, how that happens and how that comes through. Um, his, his path of life uh, is his birthday. That's what your path of life is. And your path of life isn't always something that you've done before. Uh, he does have an 11 in his path of life. And that's right here, the 4711, okay? Um, so he has a lot of 11, so he, he knows the 11. This is a Scorpio vibration, and so we know he has all that Scorpio. Um, and it's 11, so it's learning how to relate to others, learning how to relate to others. This is the only 11 vibration in the lower part of the tree. The higher part of the tree is, is more connected sort of like to your higher chakras and, and, and your heart chakra and, and the like. And so all the 11s in the, the way that I do, I do the numerology to the tree of life, all the 11 save one are found in the higher uh, chakras. And this one in fact is found in the solar plexus. And uh, it is considered a um, initiation of the personality. And the challenge with that number, that 4711, in case you have this number in your uh, chart, is non-attachment. To, to, to not be attached to the relationships of the people that you love um, in a way that doesn't allow them. I mean, you can love them. That's not what I mean. You, you can't be attached. You can't. It, it, this creates a lot of codependency in its negative state. And so sometimes relationships are, are difficult and you have all your challenges through your relationships. Um, and Joe certainly has had that um, probably uh, in spades. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have to let my cat out the door. Hold on one minute. <laughs> oh, I'll be right back, guys. Okay, so Charlie needed to go eat, I think. <laughs> he took his afternoon nap. Now he has to go eat, eat a little snack. All right, let's see. Uh, so we have, um, we talked about his path of life. We, let's talk a little bit more about his shadow, which if you haven't noticed, is the same vibration as his quiescent. The name that you come in with is very similar to an astrological chart in the positions of Pluto and uh, the south node of the moon because it tells us where the soul has come from, where they've been, what have been their latest emotional experiences. Um, and so um, the name is things that you already possess. 
your soul vibration is what your soul's worked on for a lifetime. So that's really deep. And then the outer personality, the way you sort of interact with the world is also comes from your previous lifetimes, your previous experiences. The quiescent is often talents and abilities that you bring forth from other lifetimes. And the south node of the moon is also that. Uh, but this, the south node says you can't stay here. You must progress and you must evolve in the direction of the north node. Um, which we've we've looked at in Joe's chart already right? has that north node up there in Virgo. Roll up your sleeves, conjunct Chiron in uh, in Leo. Um, so he has worked on this shadow, this wound, for more than this lifetime. This is in his first lifetime working on it. So he's been working this energy, and this vibration, which is the eight of wands no eight of cups sorry is the wounds of abandonment it's about giving a lot of time to something and it not being spiritually fulfilling and turning your back on it and going towards something that's more spiritually fulfilling um it's also a three and three is often associated with sacrifice so you have a three in your chart as one of your major numbers, especially if it happens to be your shadow, you've probably had to make a couple of or many um, sacrifices in your life, sacrifices as to maybe what you wanted to do with your life and you did what you had to do uh, or what, the, what you felt was right to do. Um, so you make a sacrifice, a willing sacrifice for the greater good. It's very Pisces. Um, so, that is the wound that he he works with and he and he is experiencing and we can see even the way he's treated uh by so many people uh just sort of like oh joe Biden, oh he's so old he's this he's done everything's joe's fault you know it's just like it's like he just he has to like that's that's just um that's the burden bearer that he, he, this year for him, 2021 on, well, your, your personal year begins on your birthday. So his birthday is in November. So his personal 2021 year didn't actually start until November of 2021. So he's still in that vibration. He's going to go into his 2022 vibration on his birthday this year, which is November 20th. Um, but this year he's in a 36 over nine vibration. And the 36 over nine, first of all, it's a nine. So it's a, it's a re, it's a, it's a, it's calling, right? It's a, it's deciding what you're going to keep and what you're going to let go of. Um, he's in, um, it, it's, it's the, it's the, um, the 10 of wands, which is known as the burden bearer in the tarot. And uh, let me just pull it up. You know exactly, you guys know all the tarot, so I'm sure. Well, you probably wouldn't be, you probably wouldn't even been able to found, find me because that's how most people found me is from the tarot. Um, so he ca he's carrying a lot of burden. He's carrying a lot of burden and he's, you know, doing it, in, he's doing it because he feels it's the right thing to do. And I think we need to give him a little bit more respect, honestly. Okay, so these are the vibrations that Joe is um, comes with and is here to learn. We'll we'll take we'll look at it even a little bit more uh, when we when I pull up the Tree of Life, which I'll do next. Um, but I want to point out a few things before we get to the Tree of Life. Um, first of all, this is the Divine Triangle. Each one of these squares is 27 year period of time. Each of these lines is a nine year line. So from zero to nine, he was in a 10-1 vibration. It's interesting because the 10-1 is the, is, the, is the wheel of fortune. And it usually means a change of fortune. And he was actually born into a wealthy family that lost its wealth by the time he was nine. So he knows in a way the pain of, losing something that you know in a way was gifted to you right um 
so that's so that's you know he's had some difficult lessons from nine to eighteen from nine to eighteen he was on a fifteen six vibration. This is a Capricorn vibration. This is working really hard. Uh, it's also a devil vibration. So this is him working uh, probably through school, through high school and the like. He was a uh, he was an athlete. So this is hard work. It's Capricorn. Capricorn is always hard work, right? Um, at 18 to 27, he went on to a 19-1 vibration. Um, this is moving in an in opposite direction. Um, I think his father might have even been a, a, a Republican. Um, but he actually became a Democrat. He, he, he started as an independent and then he moved towards being a Democrat. And then 27 uh, to um, 36, this is the year, it's five, five is about change. This is the year um, that he both won his first election. I think it was his first election and he lost his, his daughter and his wife in a car accident. Um, so, so he has, you, know, you can see these things reflected. This uh, this is his youth square. Remember, I said in his youth he has a he has a one in his youth square. It's a fifty five one. That is the ace of uh, swords. That's the ace of swords. So there's an understanding with the ace of swords about justice, right? It's the sword of justice, the sword of truth. What's true and what's not true. Okay, uh, it's also a one, so there's identity issue here, and I don't think it was easy for Joe to be Joe, you know, but it's not easy for any of us to be ourselves, right? Uh, it, that youth can be very wounding. If we uh, come out of the youth square, which some people don't, a lot of people leave the planet at 27, a lot of rock stars leave the planet at 27, it seems, the 27 club, right? They just, that's as far as they can go. That usually means that they're just sort of working off their last lifetime and they're not ready in this lifetime to maybe start a new, a new chapter. Um, but anyway, so you have your power square. This goes from 27 to 54. And this power square is a 49 over four. Um, your power square is how well you manage um, the wounds of your, your youth. <laughs> and, uh, and we have, and we look, so we look to the 55-1. Um, this can also be a brain issue, a brain issue. This, this rules the, it's, it's Aquarius, it rules the mind. So he could have had some learn, I know he had a stutter, but he could have also had some sort of learning defect that uh, made him stand out in a way that was negative. So how has he managed that? He managed that through the power square and the power square is a uh, 49 over four, which is this card here, the 10 of cups, I mean the nine of cups. Um, it is a Pisces vibration and it is four. Four is managing, um, managing crisis. Pisces is managing crisis with compassion and empathy. Um, so that's how he has been able to, uh, maybe heal some of his youth issues here. Now, um, it's also about, it's important with this vibration to have very healthy boundaries. Um, because it because it is a Pisces vibration and it's very absorptive, but you become very absorbed by other people's feelings and the like, and you don't know where people begin and you end and all that stuff. So it's very important that you have healthy boundaries. If you can manage through your power square and build power, which we have to say he built power. He is the president of the United States. You just don't do that without having worked your youth, healing your youth and building your power, right? Uh, and part of that is on, you know, that sort of a little bit of like, you know, Pisces, slippery kind of, are you, you know, he seems to be agreeing with everybody. Like, does he have an opinion? Like, you know what I mean? Like a little bit of that Joe Biden uh, energy, but it's, it, it served him well. His wisdom square of which he's almost at the end, right? He is 80. He's going to be 80 on his birthday. So there's one more year on this line of his wisdom square which is a two vibration, which when we get to the tree of life will be important. Two is your feelings, your emotions. Two is the other, right? Two is the other. Uh, being aware of the other, coming together, right? With the other, two. Um, his wisdom square is a 41, is a, is a 51, six to 51, six is this card. So he's taken the wounds of his youth 
and now is using wielding it with wisdom. The, the, it's wisdom. It's the wisdom square, and the king of swords is a man of wisdom and a fair and just man. This is his wisdom. Um, once he reaches 81, then he goes over here to this line, and he's on this line for 18 years, so from age 81 to 99, um, and he'll be in a 19 one, which is the which is the sun card. So I feel like that's when he starts to move away and go in a new direction for him. So I think he's here at least till 2024. Um, and, you know, maybe in, definitely, I think he'll be there at 2024 and we'll see where it goes from there. But um, this isn't really what this reading is about. It's, it's understanding Joe um, and that he's in the news right now and why he's in the news because he's the man that we need in this hour, right? Okay, um, so the other thing, oh, I think I'll come back to this. Let's go to the tree of life. I was going to do the personal numbers, but let's go to the tree of life instead, and we can always come back to the personal numbers. All right, so what I've done is I've taken the numbers that I got from his name and his birthday, and I put them on the tree of life where I know they go, and you could learn where they go too if you take my Kabbalah class. Um, and so we look to see, here's his soul in a place on the tree of life called Malkuth. Malkuth. Malkuth is our physical manifested reality. Everything we see, touch, everything is Malkuth. Everything above Malkuth is not manifested in, in, on the physical plane, okay? Um, but this is, and people have souls in Malkuth have been here for a long time and they've tread the path, uh, the terrestrial path for a long time. Um, also, when you have a planet in Malkuth, you're often famous. It's the place of famous people. Most famous people will have at least one thing in Malkuth. Barack Obama had his expression in Malkuth. Uh, AOC has her soul, 50 over five, just like Joe. And I believe in 11 as well, uh, just like Joe. Uh, in Malkuth, uh, well, they have the same vib soul vibrations. Um, but so, uh, but she has that 50 over five soul. That's what I meant to say. Donald Trump has his path of life here. Um, Rudy Giuliani has a whole bunch of stuff in Malkuth. You know, people that you know, right? And there's an understanding and a need with the five soul for freedom. And so they feel it at, a, at a, the depth of their soul, the, 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 both the, the, um, the desire to be free and, uh, and the willingness to sort of do what you have to do to be free. Um, his quiescent and his shadow, because it's the same vibration, remember 48 over three Pisces vibration, and here's Mercury, it's a, it's a Sephiroth of Mercury. And he has this Mercury in Pisces house in his chart, right? In that 12th house and it's in Scorpio. Uh, this vibration, the 48 over three is a Pisces vibration. It's actually the first decade of Pisces. So zero to 10 degrees of Pisces is, is located in this, in, the, in this Sephiroth. This is the mind. This is the mind. And so when you have a shadow in the place of Mercury in the mind, that's what makes me think um, there was some learning disability there, right? And of course there was the stutter. Um, but this is the Sephiroth that it benefits you to get education. So the more you educate yourself, the better off you are because this is the Sephiroth of uh, the way the mind works. And people who have this vibration, um, have a very, very good mind, generally, very good mind, uh, putting things together, uh, connecting the dots. They're very good at that. Okay, his path is over here, 4711. It's in Venus, it's in Venus's Sephiroth, Netzach, which means victory. So he's coming in to learn how to relate 11, how to love, um, 
uh, Venus himself and others, right? This is a place where he's learning about self-worth and self-esteem through his reflection, of how other people reflect back to him. This is uh, Venus. He has Venus in Scorpio, of course. Where else would it be? In the 12th house. So we have Mercury in Scorpio, 12th house. Venus in Scorpio, 12th house. This is the sun. This is the, the Sephiroth of the sun. He has the sun in Scorpio in the 12th house. This is the Sephiroth of Mars. He has Mars in Scorpio in the 12th house. And then he has Jupiter up here in Cancer. Um, so this is very emotional, very feeling, uh, transformational. You can't have all this plan, all these, he's like a doula for the new age. That's what he is. He's like a freaking doula for the new age. Um, so this is, you know, very, very emotional. And his moon is in Taurus. I don't know if you saw that in the chart if I points it out, but that Taurus moon, people love Taurus moon because what Taurus moon does is it stabilizes the feelings and he has it in the first degree of Taurus. So it's pretty new Taurus energy, right? Pretty new Taurus energy. Um, and we have Uranus, Taurus, Uranus and Taurus right now. Right. So seeds are being planted at this time for a more compassionate future. And I think Joe Biden is, we could call him Farmer Joe, because I think he's doing that in a big way, in a big way. You know, we tend to just sort of see things from our perspective. Um, but if you were to look around the world, I think that people would Maybe, I don't know, I could be wrong, but people might have a better view of, uh, of what we see, but, or what we think here. But, you know, it's also a parental thing, right? You're always pushing against the authority in your life. And we're all pushing against authority right now because Uranus is square uh, Saturn in the sky in the last quarter crisis and consciousness square. I mean, it's the, it's kind of the square of that it's like, it's, it's challenging. It's challenging. There are a lot of like things you took for granted or things that you believed that were like set in stone that are just getting shattered right now. Um, in, in, in service of us, you know, evolving and becoming, in my estimation, more loving to each other. I mean, this craziness with all this fucking war and, these they're doing war games now and with, with China and Russia and India and America and Australia it's like what what are you practicing for let's let's not go there why do we have why do we have war at the on the outside of a nuclear power plant in the Ukraine are we trying to kill ourselves right we have to love one another we have to realize that we're in this together and we can trust one another to work together to make this world a better place and that's a very feminine way of looking at things and the feminine is rising so that is the future people cooperation and you know making sure that and understanding that we're in we're in, that the earth is our our home and our mother and you know maybe a few people can go to mars where there's no atmosphere okay um but this is this is our our, our home and we need to make sure that we are taking care of our home and when we take care of our home we we also take care of our own physical bodies and we take care of our feelings and we heal the the pain there's so much pain because there's so much pain people are crying out for healing and that's what needs to happen and i think that joe understands that on some level with that south node in pisces the last degree of the south node in pisces the last few minutes of the south node in pisces does this man not understand compassion of course he does of course he does he is compassion it's powerful stuff it's powerful stuff. All right. So um, 
he's the 46th president of the United States. 46 here is in Tipperah. This is Sun, Scorpio. Um, sons are very important. He has two sons, or had two sons. He, now he has one son. And the son that he has left is when whenever they say, what do you think blah, 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 about your son? He goes, I love my son. He loves his son. And we could all learn from that, couldn't we? Okay. I didn't think I would get teary-eyed on my, my Joe Biden in the news. Oh, well. So let's take a look at his, uh, his youth square and his power square and his wisdom square and see where they fall. Because this is very interesting as well. So his youth square is up here in Kether. Kether is associated with the crown chakra. One is uh, the I am principle. This is the ace of swords. Um, and we have Neptune here. He has Neptune in the 10th house, in his 10th house, in Libra, the planet of truth and just, I mean, the, the sign of truth and justice, the balancing of the scales. And here he has his youth square, which is partly his wound that he's coming to heal, uh, that one, who am I? Um, in the crown chakra, this is somebody who's, um, I don't even know if he knew to the depth of, of, of what he was feeling when he was that young. Um, but with that, with that Neptune um, in Libra and up there, and it's in conjunct his 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 uh, south node. Um, there's I, I feel like he's a higher spiritual being that came in to do this work. Like somebody said it in one of my things, called him an angel, and I think he is a bit of an angel in that respect. Um, here is his this is his last year, right? His last nine years, the two right here, the high priestess to know and to stay silent, balance the two, right? The two, let's get along, let's cooperate, let's let's work together. That's what the two's about. Um, and so he's here for this to, to, to uh, take that ace of swords and bring the energy down to his presidency, the 46th president in the heart, coming from his heart, his heart in Scorpio, his heart that has been broken over and over and over again. And all it does is makes more room for the compassion that he feels, that he wants to express, that he wants to heal. He wants to help us heal. He's trod the path of the earth. He knows how difficult it can be, but he also knows how wonderful it can be. And he wants us to remember that. Oh boy. And here's his wisdom, his wisdom square, 41, 51 over six. This is the king of wands. I mean, the king of swords. This is the wise one. Also a, a military leader. This is the wise one. This is about, it's a six. It's about responsibility to the community to be a good steward for that but it's also about rules and regulations and laws and not being able to cross the line, not being able to say, I won when you didn't win um, and get away with it because, and then more people are gonna, you know, it's, it's you know, they're not gonna get past this, so. Um, and it's in his, um, it's in his third eye energetically, it's found in Hokma the place of the divine uh, masculine. Um, it's actually, um, you know, it's your wisdom. It's challenging because it's square and you have to work on it every day. It's not like it just comes to you. This is hard fought wisdom here. Um, is in the same place that Trump has his shadow, 37-1 shadow. So it's like, Uranus makes Trump crazy 
and Uranus enlightens Biden. And, you know, there's always going to be two sides to things anyway. If you know what I mean, like there's going to be the side for the light and there's going to be the side for the dark. And the light will, we will always become more enlightened because we move out of the density. Um, but it's, it's very interesting, very interesting times that we're in. Joe Biden's name vibrates to a, 30, a 37 over one. Um, and that's Trump's wound. And nobody's gonna be surprised by what card that is. Uh, anybody who watches the readers uh, will understand that. Uh, oh, where are you? There he is. That this is the 37 one vibration, the King of Cups. Joe's card, he always comes up. This is actually a Cancer card in the Kabbalah. It's a Cancer card. But he has Jupiter in Cancer. And he has Jupiter ruling his chart. A lot of connections, a lot, a lot of connections. This, his wisdom is Libra, Libra. This is the first decan of Libra, meaning this is where his Neptune is in his chart, in the 10th house, in his 10th house. All right, um, let's go to um, his astrology again, because I wanna show you how the speech that he did, um, I think it was last night, impacted um, impacted his chart. All right. So actually, let's let's look at the speech. Oh no, that's Joe Biden. Did I actually do? I, I do have the speech, right? Okay. Here's the speech itself. Um, we have first of all Neptune's on the ascendant. Um, so this is, um, this could be a teaching or, a, or a, 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 the speech was, a, I don't know, I guess I could say it's, it's showing, it's showing us what things are happening, but there's this, this, this sort of healing vibe here with this, uh, Neptune, but that's also obfuscating. So there's some obfuscation. Um, there's definitely um, a sense of um, it's it can be a spiritualizing energy. I think that's what I want to say. It could be a spiritualizing energy. We do have Jupiter opposite Mercury. So this is about like things are being said. Things are being said. Things are coming out into the light. And this, uh, this opposition is actually exact today. And because of Mercury's retrograde station uh, in a couple of days, Mercury and, and Jupiter are going to be opposite each other for like six weeks and they conjunct three times this today they're going to conjunct when mercury's retrograde and then when mercury goes direct again uh they're going to make a third conjunction so uh over a six week period <clears throat> so the next six weeks it's like this it's like the book is being opened the book is being opened um we do have the North Node and Uranus sitting there telling us about the, uh, you know, Uranus can be the disruptors, right? This can be a violent political, you know, what do you call Uranus, Taurus, uh, very basic, you know, Taurus, Taurus can be very, very angry, very angry, kind of deep, rage but low like low, low and um that can be expressed right that can be expressed uh, as well as mother earth saying hey 
pay attention to you, you what you're get out of your head and get into your body and get into your feelings and feel and see what you have to feel and see so you can evolve that's what this is telling us so this is right now right this this chart isn't Joe Biden's chart. This just happens to be the chart of the speech, but the speech is going to have some of those, those uh, intimations in it, right? Right. Um, we have uh, the the MC on the on the Galactic Center. Um, this the the. Um, I see in Gemini here, uh, Trump's son is in Uranus and, and, and um, son Uranus and uh, North Node are right here. Um, the sun in the sixth house. Um, sixth house is like a reality house, right? It's a Virgo house. It's like, what's wrong and we have to fix it and it enlightens that what's wrong and we have to fix it, it enlightens that um and he knows he's taking a chance because if you look at this he, he knows what he's saying now i feel like he's like saying all the things that need just need to be said and the line needs to be put in the and he also asked for the assault weapons ban i mean this is putting a line uh to, you know, for for the sense that, you know, we're a collective and we have a voice and, you know, these individualists who just want to create chaos and just God only knows, like total control or whatever, um, that that's not the direction of evolution. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, so as this speech uh, is told, and over Biden's chart, we see Mars sitting on Saturn. So Mars is like asserting his authority through speaking. Um, you know, Freedom Hall in, in Philadelphia, I believe. Yeah, so you're, yeah, here's Uranus, Uranus Saturn, right? Uranus Saturn in the United States charts, Uranus and Saturn are in a new phase to each other. And so this is like, how do you, uh, how do you create uh, a new like foundation based on on reason, right? And so that's uh, that's that's in uh, in Biden's chart. Wow, I just read that out. Okay, uh, and Mars is getting activated. We have the Sun up here, pretty close, going over his just gone over his North Node sort of lighting up this whole ninth house philosophy. And there's Venus sitting right on his Chiron, getting closer and closer to his Chiron. This is, um, this is showing courage, you know, you know, having heart, exposing your heart and here's your wounds. So, and you've been, you know, you've been wounded in this way before. And so it's a great, it's great courage. He's showing great courage in what he is, asserting how he's asserting himself now, according, you know, according to this, this chart. Uh, here's Mercury, right, the planet of, of communication on that Neptune. We know that Neptune is very powerful um, because of, um, because of it being where it is in his chart. Um, and because a lot of his, his lessons are, are around Pisces, which is Neptune's ruler. Which is uh, which ruler is Neptune, but we also have Jupiter here. So there's sort of maybe even opening up to the illusion, to this like mass delusion, like pointing it out, pointing it out. Um, yeah. So this I think was very um, very needed very needed and and the time and the time to do it so hopefully um it will it will give people hope that these guys are going to be held accountable 
I think that's, that's really, you know, it's like one thing, it's like, yeah, let's, 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 let's go in the direction of something new and break the, you know, break, break the rules so you can like figure out how to do new rules and all that. But, um, you know, we, we have to do it with, with compassion and, and, uh, and you have sometimes compassion means to say no to somebody and like, no, you can't do that. No, you know, you know, there's a limit here. There's a limit here. So, um, yeah, so I think that's really cool. So let me just do one more thing and then I'll let you guys go. I think I actually, this is my second, my second try on this because I was in my other spot in my room, but there's something about that spot. First of all, it's noisy because of the, the road outside, but it just doesn't, for some reason, it does, it, things get like, ooh, ooh. so I moved back over here and I know somebody said, can you move back into the chair? And I'm like, yes, I can move back into the chair. I just like doing my work up there because I can sit on like a better chair to do my work, but I'll make the sacrifice and move the, the computer over to here just for you guys because I love you. Um, that was funny, right? See, I told you I'd be funny. All right, I'm going to stop being funny. I want to share one more thing with you, and that is a little closer look at the numbers, is personally your numbers right now. So let's take a look at that. Um, I didn't do his chart uh, for his solar return. I should do that. That'll be a separate video. All right. So, um, and it, so just to go over, right? Youth square in his crown chakra in Kether, power square in his. Uh, sacral chakra foundation, right? The moon, the moon in Taurus. And here's his wisdom, Uranus. He has Uranus in uh, Gemini in the, in the sixth house. Like this is wisdom on sort of how to make a more Aquarian way of being uh, a reality. You know, it's just so, it's, it's just amazing to me. Sorry, I bet I'm going down the rabbit hole with this, but let me just, um, oh no, that's not how I do it. Goodness gracious, to figure out how to do it. Okay, here we go. This is what I want to show you. All right. Oh, can I do that? Oh, 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 good. I don't even know what I can do here. So just a couple of things. This is, uh, what is this? This is the uh, Labor Day speech. Okay. November 2020. 2021, 2019. Um, so remember I said Joe Biden is in a vibration of, of the uh, burden bearer. That's the 36.9 Sagittarius vibration. Remember the, the, at the MC of the, um, the speech with Sagittarius, galactic center, right? So this is wisdom. This is nine. This is wisdom coming from, um, coming from somebody who, has carried a lot of burdens and continues to carry a lot of burdens. And so here is on July uh, of um, 2022, uh, July 20th, 2022, we moved into this vibration. And um, this is when we just did the speech, the Labor Day, spe Labor Day weekend speech. Um, and what else do I have here? I wrote something else. Oh, then I have it. Shucks. Oh, no, I do. Here we go. What is, oh, the midterms. That's right. So this period of time, this goes from July 20th of 2022 to uh, November 20th of 2022. And that's when he goes into this 31, 37, one vibration, Joe. So from, so this is the midterms and this is the Labor Day speech. So this is like, this is a little bit of, it feels like a, a pep talk for the light. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Pep talk for the light. And uh, for us to sort of move in the direction of choosing uh, for there to be a change, a change. Um, and, and a one, and a one, and a, and, 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 and a consideration and an understanding. Um, and then he goes into the 37 one vibration on his birthday. And that's this card. That's the card everybody knows Joe Biden as, right? And it it is the shadow of Trump. 
And so there's the light and the dark, right? That Gemini, one will be light, one will be dark. And it'll be like this. And we will, um, you know, our ability to love is, uh, you know, this aside from Joe, our ability to love will be what uh, allows us to, I think, go in a direction that we want to see the world in. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I, I never say, it can, I don't ever say, uh, could it be worse or how could it be worse or anything like that? But it's pretty bad right now. And we have the power to uh, shift that through our consciousness and our willingness to open up to love. Love is an energy and you can do it. Everybody can do it. Just, just focus on your chest area and just imagine that like there's like, or go with your breathing heart or your breath and every any time you breathe in and your, your chest expands, you know, you're expanding with love and then you're breathing in and breathing out love and peace and harmony and all those things. Um, you know, some of us, that's all we can do. But our consciousness is very powerful. And so if we're all doing that, if we're all focusing on the love, and how do we do that? We do that by opening our hearts. We do that through laughter. We do that through helping somebody else. We do that through creativity, right? Leo, the heart, creative. One of the best things you can do is be creative. I've spent the last like three days like a maniac creating content for my new uh, classes because I, I have this urge to create something useful and beautiful. So it's, it's so much fun in my little corner of the thing where you can't hear me very well. Um, but um, yeah, so that's what we, that's what we need to do. But I think that, you know, 2022, to, so this is going to be November 2022 to November of 2023. So this is going to be 2023. And I think that's probably, I think Trump's going to get indicted. Um, I think uh, that's going to be a big deal. Joe's going to be on some, even though he's not involved, he's, you know, um, you know, holding, holding, you know, I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But um, I'm all for the light. I'm all for the light. So I'm on Joe's side. <laughs> I'm on the side of compassion. I'm on the side of compassion. Yeah. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that. That went on a, a couple of tangents that I wasn't expecting, but I think it's good stuff and I think you'll probably enjoy it. So this is the kind of work I do. If you like these kind of readings, I can do them on you. I need your astrology and your name and your, you know, your, your information and I can do a reading. And um, if you're a first time person getting a reading, I suggest you get the 90 minute reading that gives us plenty of time to go over the astrology and the numerology and the Kabbalah. And even if you don't know astrology or don't even know what the word Kabbalah means, um, I'll tell you, you know, I'll give you a little, you get, you, you learn a little bit about it if you don't know about it. And if you know about it, then it just, you're like, whoa. So it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so I think that the, the 90 minute reading for your first reading, and then if you want to just see what's going on and what's the, the energies of the time, or you're going through something else that you want to look at uh, that we can utilize those tools with, then, you know, you can uh, do an hour. But uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. It changed my life. I mean, I was going along doing my thing. And then I had this reading that I offered to you. And I was like, oh, my goodness. It like, I, it put me in a whole new direction. And I think uh, it's been a very good direction for me. So, um, you know, I think self-knowledge is uh, really important. And uh, understanding like who you are and what your gifts are and just sort of accepting that and being within that energy field, allowing yourself to be happy. Ooh, 
And it's not always about happiness, you know, but sometimes it's about happiness. You know, sometimes it's about, you know, putting your head down and, you know, taking one day at a time. And, you know, I've been there. I know what that feels like. And, uh, and I still go there often enough, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> uh, so I hope you enjoyed this reading on Joe. Sorry about the, the little tangent, <laughs> a little tangenty right now. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this and uh, you can, like I said, you can have a reading like this. Oh, and I have some, oh, you're going to be so mad at me. I have some classes. Um, I have a, astrology, uh, intermediate astrology, we're doing transits. I have an intermediate astrology, we're doing uh, relationship dynamics. I have a beginner's astrology starting on the 13th. I think it'll be Monday nights for six weeks. And um, my Kabbalah, my Kabbalah students, we're going a little bit further on the tree of life. It's very exciting. Um, so that's what's happening in, in September here for me. Um, and no, nothing starts till after uh, Labor Day, so you have time if you're interested. Um, please join me. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. Namaste. Pray for Joe. Let's hold him in our heart, and let's, let's understand what he's here to teach us. He's teaching us to love one another, and to forgive, and to let go, and to trust that you will be held in the heart of God. Okay. Mwah. Namaste, everyone. <laughs>